The biggest problem with reality is that it's just too real. We've all existed in reality our entire lives. But thankfully, we live in the future, and reality is getting spiced up with augmented reality. It's not just those weird cards on your 3DS anymore. There are tons of options right now to help you add a little something extra to your existence. As we grow ever closer to the merging between human and machine, the number of possibilities available to help facilitate this cyberpunk future is ever increasing. And now I know what you're thinking, but Seth, I can't afford an Apple Vision Pro. I have mouths to feed and bills to pay. Well, that's kind of what Budget to Best is here for. Yes, I am 100% going to talk about the Apple Vision Pro, but I'm also gonna talk about more reasonable devices, ones that don't cost as much as a very crappy used car. So without further ado, let's take a look at the AR solutions we've landed on for this episode of Budget to Best. You've no doubt seen advertisements for the X-Real Air glasses on your social media feed. At first glance, they look like a pair of everyday Wayfarer-style sunglasses, the kind you might see on a movie star or off-duty racing car driver. But look closely and you'll see they're not glasses at all, but are in fact augmented reality goggles, sort of. They lack the features of many of the higher end sets I'm discussing later, but if you primarily want a way to sit on an airplane or lay in bed looking at the ceiling to watch movies or play games, this is a great choice starting at $299.99. Just plug your USB-C device into the glasses and boom, a magical screen is now hovering in your field of vision. The X-Real Air glasses are ideal if you're not planning to move your head too much because the screen doesn't hover in place like it does with more expensive models. That being said, it is possible to get a nice screen hovering experience with these entry-level AR glasses. You just need to start spending some more money. The X-Real Air and Air Pro 2 both unlock way more functionality when you add in the X-Real Beam device, which adds three extra viewing modes and other cool features like native Netflix support. However, the Beam is an additional $119 on top of the cost of the glasses. The X-Real Air Pro 2 glasses have a better picture over the entry-level X-Real Air, along with a 120 hertz refresh rate and dimming controls, but they're priced at $449 a pair, and you still need the beam to unlock all the viewing modes. If you want screen anchoring right out of the box, consider the Vitcher XR glasses. However, they're not cheap either, starting at $349. But again, to unlock the Vitcher's full potential, you need to add an additional mobile dock. The nice thing about the Vitcher dock is it doubles as a 13,000 milliamp hour battery pack, which is nice. Thanks, Vitcher. Pro move. There's also a crazy neckband you can buy that allows you to stream via your console's remote play. It also doubles as a 3200 milliamp hour battery, again, coming in clutch for the extra power. But as you probably figured out by now, that ain't cheap either. The neckband will set you back another $179. The MetaQuest 3 might be the best VR helmet on the market right now. It improves on its already great predecessor in almost every meaningful way. Better tracking, better resolution and refresh rates, uh, better controllers. You get what I'm getting at. But the Quest 3's biggest improvement over the Quest 2 is its pass-through camera. No longer does jumping out of a game or the interface transport you into a grayish dimension resembling what Neo saw when he gained his Matrix superpowers. The real world is crisp and brightly colored, and if you felt the need, you could probably just take a walk with your Quest 3 on, stopping occasionally to play Beat Saber in the park. Not perfect, mind you. The resolution still won't match your vision, corrected or otherwise. So if you go to check your phone, you'll likely need to pull the headset off in order to read that important text about your car's extended warranty. Games that support mixed reality mode like Lego Brick Tales or Samba de Amigo Virtual Party fill your living space with characters and interactions that, to someone as little as 50 years ago, would seem like some manner of dark sorcery. But it's not. It's just technology, baby, which is still pretty cool. More of a fan of sorcery. On top of that, the $499.99 Meta Quest 3 has MR fitness apps, 
apps for productivity. Of course, it's an amazing wireless VR headset with a huge library of games that also happens to have the ability to work with the PC. Honestly, the MetaQuest 3 might be the sweet spot here. While it lacks the ability to accept whatever input you throw at it, you can still use it to play your compatible consoles via remote play. And there are enough native apps where you don't really need to plug in your phone to watch Netflix anyway. I personally don't think I'd bring it with me on an airplane, but that's just me. If you're comfortable with it, I salute you. Okay, finally, let's talk about the absolute unit that is the Apple Vision Pro. This is most definitely the most advanced AR headset on the market, and it costs as much as I spent on my first car back in the day. Yeah, at first blush, it seems wholly unnecessary as a device, but when you use it, well, I reviewed the Apple Vision Pro and I gave it an eight. It's not a perfect device by any means, pretty heavy, and the weight distribution puts almost all of its heft on the bridge of my nose. The battery life is roughly equivalent to the MetaQuest 3, but you have to use an external battery pack tethered to the headset by a cable. And it's only, only for mixed reality. Whoops, I meant spatial computing TM, 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 trademark registered, which is a bummer because the 3,391 by 3,391 pixel resolution, excellent sound quality, and the Apple M2 processor would make it the ultimate VR headset, and it wouldn't even be close. Then there's that $3,499 and 99 cent price tag to deal with. I definitely have a hard time justifying that massive price, but the experience really is leagues above any other headset I've tried. It does have mixed reality gaming, and a lot of the MetaQuest's MR games can be played here on the Vision Pro. The pass-through cameras, all 12 of them, let you see the world at a resolution that's just good enough to where I was able to mostly check my phone, which is dumb of me to have done since iMessage works on the Vision Pro when you sign in with your Apple ID. So my messages were just floating in front of me. Regardless, the Vision Pro just works and it works well. There are a lot of things I really love about it and I recommend you go watch my review for a more in-depth look at it. Basically, it comes down to a Ferris Bueller quote. It is so choice. If you have the means, I highly recommend picking one up. Shout out to my fellow olds who know that one by heart. So there you have it. Our picks for AR headsets from the budget to the best. As always, let us know your recommendations in the comments section. And for more AR action, check out our review of the MetaQuest 3. For everything else, keep it right here on IGN. Oh, reality.